I am so, so thankful for the folks that I interacted with in College Station this weekend. I'm going to get to the Auburn-Texas A&M game a little bit later, but man, what a weekend. I don't know how many pictures I took with you guys. I don't know how so many of you got on the field. Either every single late kick fan in College Station was allowed on the field, or the ratio of the folks that I met on the field that love the show, uh, if that translates to the crowd, we're doing a whole lot right here. So thank you for that. Met our academy reps out there. So I got a lot to talk about. We'll get to that in due time. But wow, where else can I start? I, I, I had a unique experience last night because a lot of these games I was listening to the ending of. So let's just dive right in. Florida got obliterated by South Carolina yesterday. The final is 40 to 17. You may think to yourself, Huh, must have been a close game throughout. And then South Carolina, it must have been plus turnovers for them. They must have scored 21 non-offensive points. No, no. It's just a, a wire-to-wire woodshedding, just a full-on splattering in Columbia. If you get caught in a mudslide, that happens. These things will happen from time to time. But that's not what happened here. No one got caught in a mudslide. No one was taken by surprise. You get caught in the mudslide, eh, these things happen. But if you drive by three different warning signs that the road is flooded ahead and then you end up getting your car washed away, that's on you. And so a lot of people last night were watching this game and some of you were even stunned by it. And I'm not so sure why, because we essentially spoiled the ending for you. If you watched the game or better yet, if you didn't and you just saw the final score and you found yourself saying, self, I wonder how this happened. Well, Colin, let's tee the video up because it probably happened a little something like this. But you and I both know there could be something else in play. And that something else could be that team coming out of the Georgia game could be lifeless. They could be gutted. Uh, it could be a fractured locker room. I'm not in there. I'm not giving you any firsthand accounts. I'm saying we've seen that happen before. And if they are in that state of mind, then nothing's off the table. They go to South Carolina Saturday. They're like a 19-point favorite. They could lose. They could lose the game outright. I'm telling you, that will be Super Bowl mode for South Carolina and Shane Beamer. Don't think for a second Florida couldn't lose that game. Florida was the mosquito and South Carolina was the Mack truck. And so it happened last night. The worst case happened. You know, just as much as we sat here and talked about last week, the best case for Dan Mullen being win the rest of your games, you'll be favored in, and you'll be 8-4, and four, win the bowl game, you'll be 9-4, and four, make some staff changes, you'll be good. All that was assuming best case. We're done with that. Okay, best case is long gone at this point. Even though it's only been 24 hours, best case is long gone. Hey, I want to take you back. I want to take you back to bowl season last year. You remember how some of us, including me on this show, we were criticized when we dared speak ill of Dan Mullen for the way he handled the ending of the season and the way they no-showed that Cotton Bowl. And the feedback that we got, at least the feedback that I got, was, well, it was a meaningless game. And, well, the season was over. Dan Mullen even went as far as to say, eh, this team, the 2021 team, or the 2020 team, they played their last game. December. They played their last game in the SEC championship game. So Florida goes to the Cotton Bowl, and they get annihilated by Oklahoma, but a lot of people really didn't take well to the criticism because, as Dan Mullen said, and some people reiterated because he said it, uh, the season's over. season was over in December. This is a, an early sneak peek at the 2021 team. I had a big problem with it. I've documented it on the show. Some of you agreed, some of you didn't, but the pushback that I got from those of you who didn't was, well, he was right. The season was over. That's not the point, guys. That's not the point. The point was you allowed your team to quit on a season and then you endorsed it. And here's the problem with endorsing the 2020 team, not making it to the finish line. Guess who was watching? The 2021 team. And now the 2021 team is refusing to make it to the finish line, only it's not bowl season. You still got a month of the season as of last night still to go. And that is the impetus for why the downfall of Dan Mullen's tenure at Florida has already begun. I don't like talking about it. I have said this many times. I have been the last one to the table on the whole Dan Mullen hot seat talk and still am. But the reason that Dan Mullen's exit from Florida has already been put into motion is because he endorsed last season his team quitting before they hit the finish line. And now the 2021 team watched that happen. And now they're doing the same thing. Florida in their last eight to 10 power five games, it's, it's terrible. It's one of the most popular stats floating around today. Look, I'm just going to put it out there for you. 
I have no clue how Dan Mullen survives this thing. I'm not saying he's fired by midnight. I'm saying long term, I have no clue how Dan Mullen gets this thing back on the tracks. But I would love for you to sell me on it. If you can sell me in some logic-based, tangible way on how Dan Mullen could correct all the wrongs now with Florida football, I'd be more than happy to listen. But you got to overcome what I'm looking at right now. To be clear, I'm looking at zero recruiting momentum, which you would absolutely need to make the wrongs right. You would certainly need game-changing classes already in the stable. They don't necessarily have that right now. Recruiting is trending in the wrong direction there, not the right direction. You've lost your team twice in as many seasons. Last year in the bowl game, and then the 2021 team watched you endorse that happening, and now they've done it too. And here's the problem. The problem with this team quitting, to put a finer point on it before the season's over, is every team you'll have from here on out is watching this one do the same thing. And what are you going to do about it? You can't do anything about it. You don't get a team back in the season once you've lost them. But let's continue. Because if you're going to sell me that this is possible, I'd love to hear it. You've got to overhaul your staff. Now, that's what the main go-to is today for the few who are still trying to sell you on the idea that Mullen can get this thing right. Again, I'll be happy to listen to it, but you got to find me to be clear what they need out there. And that is all world coaches and recruiters who are going to be willing to come on board what is viewed by many internally as a lame duck situation. It's not finding them, guys. you got to get them to come on board. Who's going to come on board that's actually worth having to the degree that you need to turn a program around? I don't see them. I have no clue who that would be. And the fan base is overwhelmingly gone at this point. So those are the things that are stacked against Dan Mullen. If you can sell me on him being able to put together a magic elixir to overcome that, I'm all ears. Trust me, I'm all ears. But man, just as Florida had a disastrous Saturday night, this was really good for South Carolina. And I was really happy for their purposes to see them pull this off because no one really cares down the road. In fact, I don't think in Columbia they care right now that Florida was without some players because of the flu. No one in Columbia, South Carolina is feeling sorry about Florida is what I'm telling you. And so at South Carolina, what matters is they get to write in all bold, 72-point font, South Carolina in year one under Shane Beamer beat Florida, even in year one. You know, Shane Beamer's been there about four minutes. Dan Mullen's been there about four years. Whose team played harder for him last night, though? Which team seemed more all-in? Which team seemed more likely to go over the cliff for their head coach? It ain't the one with tenure. It was South Carolina, and it was Shane Beamer's team. Now what they have to do is what we always talk about with early staffs and early on in the tenure of a new staff. You're looking for tangible things to sell as a vision. That's what you're looking for. So you got to win them, but once you win them, you got to package it up and you got to take it out of there. And you got to tell kids this is just a small inkling of a sample size of what we're going to be capable of down the road. Hey, Marcus Satterfield, credit him. That's the offensive coordinator at South Carolina. He's gotten a ton of ire directed his way this year because they haven't gotten the results they've wanted to and the quarterback situation's been a mess. I mean, we, we all know what the deal is there, but they had a really good game last night. A really good game. They ran the ball well, and now they're five and four. They go to Missouri this week. That game's right around a pick em. It's going to be one or two points either way. And then they've got Auburn coming in, and then they've got Clemson coming in. Got to win one of them to be bowl eligible. What if they win more than one of them? I don't know that it's so far out of the realm of possibility. And so that's going to be fun to watch. But, man, I, I honestly don't know what to expect at Florida. I thought Thomas Goldcamp had a really, really good article over on Swamp 24-7 today. And he talked about the perception out there that, oh, it's going to, it's going to be too costly to buy Dan Mullen out. Well, that's all relative, first off. Secondly, there's never going to be a more opportune time to do it than right now. Because what Thomas pointed out, which I guarantee you most of you, including me, didn't really even realize is their assistant coaches are on deals that expire at the end of this year. Translation, yeah, you may have to pay 12 some odd million dollars to buy Dan Mullen out if you so choose. Not the staff. Staff's out of there anyway. If you don't renew them, they're out of there anyway. And so you, you got a decision to make down there. Oh, it's not my decision. It's the athletic director's decision down there. He, they've been locked at the hip ever since the Mississippi State days. I understand. But Scott Strickland also understands this is business. And if you don't pull the trigger when it's time to, then your boss will pull the trigger down the road because you failed to. Scott Strickland's not stupid. He understands that. 
I think we're past the point of no return with Dan Mullen. I've said that twice in about as many months about head coaches in this conference. Um, not that I'm celebrating being right. We're one for one so far on that. I think last night was so huge. This is not a conclusion drawn over four quarters, but it's so much bigger than just that game. It's symbolic of what it represents now two years in a row. You go find me the last time that you saw a head coach lose his teams two years in a row and then get it back and achieve at a higher level than he had before. I just don't think that sample's out there. So either Dan Mullen's going to do something that's never been seen in the history of the sport, or you got to do something that's been done many times in the history of the sport, and that is cut bait when it's time to and not waiting a year or two too long.